Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to knit a simple slouchy sweater. So the first thing you're going to need to make this sweater is the free written pattern, which you can get by clicking the link in the description box below. And the free written pattern is available at that link on my blog. Or you can also purchase a large print ad-free printable PDF version of the pattern in my Ravelry store. Now this pattern comes in nine different women's sizes from an extra small to a 5X. I'm going to be making the extra small. So you'll also need some yarn for your sweater. I'm using Lion Brand Pound of Love in Oxford Gray. And this is a worsted weight yarn. And the amount will be given in the written pattern if you want to find out how many yards you need for the size you want to make or if you want to substitute a different worsted weight yarn. I recommend pretty much anything that's nice and soft and not real scratchy. So you'll also need a circular knitting needle. Now this one is about 40 inches long and it's a size eight, a five millimeter needle. But the reason that we're using a circular needle instead of straight needles is because even though this entire sweater is worked flat and there are no sections that are worked in the round at all. Everything is worked back and forth in rows. But because the sweater is worked mostly in one piece, we don't want to try to cram, you know, for most sizes over 200 or 300 stitches onto like a 14 inch straight needle. So we use a long circular needle and work back and forth on it so that we make sure that our stitches have room to be on the needle. So we're gonna still be working back and forth, but we just need that extra length to hold all the stitches that we're going to be using here. So you'll also need some scissors, a yarn needle or blunt tapestry needle, a measuring tape, and two stitch markers. And you'll want to make sure that the stitch markers you're using are at least big enough around that your needle can slide through like this because these are stitch markers that we're going to be slipping on the row as we're knitting. So this sweater is knit in three pieces. We have the main body of the sweater all as one piece and then two sleeves. So for the body of the sweater, we're gonna start across the bottom and we're going to knit up to the underarms then we're going to do a front section, which is just continuing up with a rectangle for the front on the one side. And then we're going to bind off part of those stitches and knit a little kind of tab that sticks up on the neck edge. Then we're going to join the yarn on another section of that same rectangle and knit up some more to make a longer section. That's still all part of the same piece. Then with the stitches that are left on the other side, we're going to join yarn again and knit up another piece of rectangle with another little section that kind of protrudes off of the neck edge. It's basically just a modified rectangle with slits in it for the armholes. So this is a drop shoulder style sweater. So the sleeves have very little shaping involved and the armholes have no shaping whatsoever. So this is very approachable for someone who's an advanced beginner and hasn't made a garment before. All right, so we're gonna start with our cast on. I have my yarn here and I'm going to leave several yards of a tail because we are going to be doing a long tail cast on. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a slip knot like so, and I'm going to place it on my right needle tip and I'm going to do a long tail cast on. So I've got my yarn in the slingshot position. Um, generally, if you are a beginner knitter, this is one of the first cast ons that you learn. So I've got the tail yarn coming over the back of my thumb and then down. And then I have the yarn that's coming from the skein going over the top of my index finger and woven in between my other fingers below and also going down. So I'm holding both of those strands of yarn, the length of them, uh, with my other three fingers in my hand. So I'm going to bring the needle tip towards me 
and pick up, as you can see, the strands cross around my thumb. I'm going to pick up the one that's closest to me. And then I'm going to reach over here and grab the strand of yarn off my index finger and pull it through. Then I'm going to take my thumb out of that yarn and then pick it up again with my thumb to tighten up the stitch. You don't want to make it too tight. You just want to make it so that it's not loose and saggy and floppy. So again, I'm going to bring the needle tip towards me, pick up the strand of yarn that is closest to me coming off the front of my thumb, then reach back here and grab the yarn that's coming off of my index finger and pull it underneath that original strand, pull my thumb out, and then grab that yarn again with my thumb to kind of tighten it up a little bit. But generally, if you are a beginner knitter, or at least an advanced beginner knitter, then you will have learned this cast on already. So I'm not going to spend a bunch of time explaining that here. This is a relatively universally taught um, cast on, as far as I know, among like, you know, learn to knit books and stuff like that. So I'm going to keep casting on all the way across and I need for the extra small I need a total of 186 stitches. Alright so I have finished casting on all the stitches that are needed for the size that I'm making and I just want to kind of explain a little bit here before we get started. This might look really long right now. I know you can't really see it yet how, how wide it actually is until we start knitting and get some fabric, you know, started. But once we start knitting this, it's going to seem really wide. But the reason why it's so wide is because, first of all, this is the back and both fronts all in one piece. Secondly, this sweater has four inches of positive ease. And you can size down if you're in between sizes if you want to, to make it slightly more fitted. But regardless, it's still got some room in it, a little bit of extra room, so that it can be kind of slouchy. And on top of that, we are knitting the kind of like the collar edging that comes around on uh, the front. It goes up the front, behind the neck, and then back down. We are knitting that all in one piece with the rest of the sweater. And not only does that add to the width beyond what you would normally knit for a sweater, but it also is going to be wide enough that that collar edging can fold back on itself. So it's going to be, this whole um, main body panel is going to be the entire bust circumference plus four inches plus those um, collar edgings that are going to be knit on the ends of our panel here so that when we assemble our sweater that will be the front and those collar um, edging panels will be wide enough to fold back and again this will make more sense if you look at the schematic or at the photo that shows the finished body panel piece so now we're going to go ahead and start knitting the ribbing. So this sweater calls for a two by two ribbing, meaning that we do two knit stitches to two purl stitches. And I will explain that a little bit more when we get to that. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the needle that we finished casting on with, the one with the yarn tails coming off of it, and we're going to move the cast on tail or the yarn tail out of the way and we're going to knit with the yarn that's coming from the ball. So because we're not knitting in the round here, I'm just going to kind of scoot the rest of the stitches down off of my left needle and we are going to be knitting starting from here. So you want to make sure that the needle with the yarn coming off of it is in your left hand. And I kind of like to bring some stitches down and scrunch them up onto the needle before I get started. And what we're going to do is work row one. So for row one, we're going to purl two and knit two all the way across. So we're just going to 
purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, and we're going to keep doing that all the way across until we have two stitches left on the other side of our needle. All right, so I'm down to the last two stitches, and now I'm just going to purl two. And once we finish this row, then you should still have the same number of stitches that you started with. All right, so now we're going to turn and work row two, which is the reverse of row one. So for row two, we're going to knit two, purl two across to the last two stitches. So just knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, all the way across until there are only two stitches left on the needle. All right, and we're down to the last two stitches, and we're just going to knit those last two stitches. All right, so those are the two rows that we're going to repeat to make our ribbing. And for rows three to 20, we're gonna just repeat rows one and two. Repeat row one, repeat row two, repeat row one, repeat row two. Just going back and forth until you have a total of 20 rows. And the last row you work should be row two. All right, so I have finished my ribbing section. I did a total of 20 rows just as the pattern describes and I ended with the second row. So now we are going to move into the body of the sweater. And by the way, this is gonna look tiny right now, but this is ribbing. And when you get into the stockinette stitch part, it gets a lot wider just because ribbing kind of shrinks up. So that's why this looks so small. But once we get into the stockinette part, you'll see how, you know, how big it actually is. So I'm going to start by working row three. So for row three, for the size that I'm working, it tells me to purl two, knit two, six times. So, purl two, knit two, that's one. Purl two, knit two, there's two. Three. four, five, and six. And then I'm supposed to purl two. So what we're doing here is this part right here at the beginning and end of our piece that we're making, the ribbing is going to continue up the fronts of the cardigan and this is the part that's going to kind of fold back from the center where the cardigan comes together. So if you remember the stitch markers that the pattern calls for, this is where they come in. Now we're going to place a marker on the right needle, and then we're going to knit across to a certain point and work some more ribbing at the other side. So for the size that I'm making, the pattern tells me to knit 134 stitches. We're not knitting and purling, we're just knitting across. All right, so that is the 134 stitches that I was supposed to knit for my size, and we're going to place another stitch marker on the right needle, and then the pattern tells me to, again, purl to knit to six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and then purl two. So that is row three. That is kind of a setup row for the rest of the body of the sweater. And now we're going to work row four. 
So because we are placing the stitch markers on the needle, that means we're going to be slipping the stitch marker every time we come to it. So we're going to start working row four and to do that, the pattern tells me to knit two, purl two, six times. So that was one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm supposed to knit two and slip the marker, which just means that I am taking it from what is now the left hand needle and slipping it to the right hand needle. And now I'm supposed to purl all the way across to the other marker. So I'm going to keep purling every one of these stitches until I get to the other marker. All right, so I'm up to the marker. I'm again going to slip the marker from the left needle to the right needle. And then I'm supposed to knit two, purl two again six more times. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and then knit the last two stitches. So that is our row four, and now we're going to work row five. And as you can see, even though we've only done two rows so far of stockinette stitch in the body of the sweater, um, meaning not including the uh, kind of the part that folds back the collar. This is already starting to spread out on the needle and appear wider. And the reason for that, you'll see it even better once we keep going. But the reason for that is because ribbing, even though it's the same number of stitches as what we're going to have up here, ribbing is kind of like the same thing as if you took a piece of paper and you accordion folded it. So you folded it like in a zigzag, that piece of paper is going to sit um, and appear much narrower until you stretch it out and make it flat. So the ribbing is kind of like if the paper were accordion folded at the bottom and flat at the top. And I know paper's not that flexible in real life, but you get the picture. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to row five. So to do this, we are going to purl to knit two six times for the size that I'm making. Again, follow the instructions for the size that you're making because for some of, of the sizes, it's a different number than six times. But for the extra small, I'm supposed to do it six times. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then purl two. And then we're up to our marker. We're going to slip the marker to the right needle. And then we are just going to knit every stitch across until we get to the other marker. All right, so here's the marker. I'm going to slip the marker to the right needle. Then I'm supposed to purl two, knit two, six times. So there's the first time. Two. Three. Four. five, and six, and then just purl the last two stitches. 
So those are the first rows of the rest of the sweater that's, you know, not the ribbing part. And we're going to keep repeating rows four and five until the, the piece is the length that you need for the size that you're making. And for the size that I'm making, I'm supposed to keep repeating rows four to five until my piece measures 15 and a half inches from the cast on edge to the stitches that are on the needle. Okay, so I have knit to the correct length for the size that I'm making, and now we're going to be making the upper part of the sweater. So as you can see right here, what I have so far is just a big rectangle. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start working the upper right front. So we're going to make a section that's just kind of a rectangle that's going to extend off of the rectangle we've already got, and that's going to be the upper right front of the sweater. So by doing that, if we make a section that comes up from here, then we're going to make another section that comes up here, and then another section that come up, comes up from here that are all just rectangles, that will create the upper portions of the sweater and give us some armhole slits. So we are going to start by working row one of the upper right front and we're going to purl two, knit two, for my size, six times, but for some of the other sizes, it, there are more times that you're supposed to work that. So for my size, I'm supposed to purl two, knit two, six times, and then we're going to purl two, and slip the marker. So now we're going to knit across to a point and then stop and not continue to work across the rest of our of our row here. So for the size that I'm working, I'm supposed to knit 27 stitches and then stop. All right, so for my size, that was my 27 stitches, but for the size you're making, it may be different. So what I'm going to do is stop and not continue across the previous row. So now we're only going to work back and forth across this section right here. So now we're going to turn and go back the other way. We're just going to pretend that all the rest of these stitches are not a part of the panel that we're working because we're only working back and forth across this section and the rest of the stitches from that previous row are going to be held on the needle until we're ready to, to work with them. So for row two, for the size that I'm making, I am supposed to purl 27 and then slip the marker. And then for the size that I'm making, I'm supposed to knit two, purl two, six times. And then I'm supposed to knit the last two stitches. So that is row two. And now we're going to turn again. And if you look right here, you'll be able to see where we stopped because as you can see right here, there's like a gap um, between this stitch and this stitch. And that is because this is the rest of the stitches that we're not working with right now. And this is where we stopped our uh, row for this section to stop right here. So you will be able to tell where this section stops because there will be a gap. And as we work up the section that we're on right now, the upper right front, this gap will get larger because this part will get longer and this part will not. It will just be held on the needle. So now we're going to work row three. So for row three, we're going to purl two, knit two, six times for the size that I'm working, but again, it's gonna be different depending on the size you're making. And then we're going to purl two and slip the marker. And then for the size that I'm working, I'm supposed to knit 27. All right, so that's the end of that row. And as you can see, this section, the upper right front is starting to get a little bit longer than the rest of the, the sweater is currently. So I'm going to keep repeating rows two and three until the piece measures the correct distance from the stitches on the needle to the cast on edge, so down here. So for the size that I'm making, I'm supposed to continue repeating rows two and three 
until the piece measures 23 inches from here to the cast on edge. All right, so I have finished the upper right front to this point. As you can see, here is um, the rest of the sweater still held on that cable. And what we've done is we have worked this section until it is the correct length from the cast on edge, ending with row three, which was the knit row on the right side. So now we're going to work the wrong side row. So now we're going to turn and work the purl row. But what we're going to do is we're going to bind off all of these stitches as we go across and stop when we get to the marker. And that's because we're going to let this collar piece go a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is bind off in pattern and that just means we're going to bind off with purl stitches instead of knit stitches. So I'm going to purl one stitch, purl the next stitch, and pass the first stitch over the second one, purl the next stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one, purl the next stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one, and etc. And you want to do this kind of loosely, but this is not a place where you would substitute a stretchy bind off because this is going to be your shoulder seam. And if you use a stretchy bind off here, then that seam can get stretched out and it can get a little bit saggy. So we're just going to purl bind off all the way to the marker. So here's one stitch left before the marker. I'm going to bind off and then I'll have one stitch before the marker. And then all the rest of it is just that ribbing. Now we're going to hang on to this one stitch before the marker because this is kind of going to be our little bit of a seam allowance. So when we seam this um, collar piece, it will have an extra stitch on the edge to seam with. So I'm going to remove the marker and then I'm just going to finish working across. So I'm just knitting two and purling two all the way across till the last two stitches. And then when I get to the last two stitches, I'm going to knit two. So that was row four. And for row four, we bound off the what's going to be the shoulder seam. But if I lay this out here, this is what our sweater looks like right now. So here, from this side over to here, is not... Um, knit up yet. It's still where we stopped for the main part of the back panel. This right here is going to be our shoulder seam. And then this ribbing section is going to extend a few more inches past the shoulder seam because it's going to go around the back of the neck. So there are two more rows that are going to be worked for this ribbing section. And for row five, we're going to purl two, knit two, across to the last three stitches. So now we've got three left. I'm going to purl two and knit one. And that knit one is going to be my edge stitch where I sew this extended part of the collar to the back of the neck. So I'm going to turn again and I'm going to purl one for row six, then I'm going to knit two, purl two, across to the last two stitches, and then I'm going to knit those last two stitches. So those are the two rows we're going to be repeating for the ribbing section. So we're going to keep working those two rows until the ribbing section extends the correct length past this bound off edge. So for the size that I'm making, my ribbing section needs to extend two and three quarter inches past this bound off edge. So it needs to extend two and three quarter inches further than this does for the size that I am making. Again, it's gonna be a different measurement depending on the size that you're making. All right, so I have continued with that ribbing section until it is the correct measurement for my size from this bound off shoulder edge. And now we're going to bind this off. So when you knit this little ribbing section out longer, you're supposed to end with row five. 
So now we're going to bind off in pattern and that just means as we bind off we're going to be knitting the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches. And this right here is going to be the neck edge. So we ended with row 5 so that our yarn is currently over here so that when we bind off our yarn will end up, our tie off point will end up over here. So this first stitch right here is a purl so I'm going to purl that stitch then the next stitch is a knit so I'm going to knit it and pass the first stitch over the second one. The next stitch is a knit column stitch so I'm going to knit it pass the first stitch over the second one, and again we're doing this kind of loosely. The next stitch is a purl stitch, so I'm going to purl that stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one, purl the next stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one, knit the next stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one, knit, pass the stitch over, and then again these two are purl stitches, so we're going to purl each of those as we bind them off and you get the idea I'm just going to bind off all the way across and as I do it I'm purling the purl stitches and knitting the knit stitches. So there is my bound off edge and now we're going to cut the yarn and I'm going to leave about a yard of a tail to help sew up the back of the neck and the shoulders and then we're just going to tie off. So if I lay this out flat, this is what our sweater looks like right now. We still have this section over here that is still on the needles, and then we have this part up here that extends up, like so, and then the ribbing part extends even further past that shoulder seam. So if this right here is our upper right, this is kind of the top um, this is the shoulder seam up here. This is going to go around the back of the neck, kind of like that. So now we're going to knit the upper back, and to do that, we're going to start right here. Now we're starting basically at the first stitch. If the right side is facing me, which it is, it's the first stitch on what would be the left hand needle if we picked it up to knit it. But between this end of the row and this end of the row, this is the end that is on the right hand side with the right side facing up. So basically just right here at the underarm where we stopped knitting for the upper right front, this is where we're going to pick up and continue knitting to a point and then we're going to stop for the upper back. So I've got the same yarn, I'm going to keep using it. And what I'm going to do is we're going to kind of join the yarn right here, or start knitting with it at least. And for the size that I'm making, I'm supposed to knit 80 stitches and then stop. So I'm going to go ahead and knit my 80 stitches. All right, so there's my 80 stitches. Now I'm going to stop. And this from here to where I am right now is going to be the upper back. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop like we did while we were working the upper right. We're going to stop right here and now we're just going to turn and work back the other direction and treat this part as its own section now because this is going to be its own section. Just as we made this section extend up, we're going to make another section that extends up. So now for row two. I'm going to kind of pull on my right needle to get a length of my cable out. And for row two, I'm going to purl all the way across. All right, so now I have purled across that row. And because this first stitch that we had originally um, started our yarn with, it's going to be a little bit loose and stretchy like that. So I'm just going to pull on the working yarn just so that it is snug against the needle like a normal tension stitch and just even out the size of the stitch below it which is the one with that yarn tail and then I'm just going to tie the working yarn and the yarn tail together in a gentle double knot. You don't want to be like pulling it super hard 
but just to secure that yarn tail so that that stitch doesn't stretch out of shape. And now I'm going to turn again and work row three. And for row three, we're just going to knit across the section that we just did. All right, so here we are. And you'll be able to tell where the end of the section is because you'll see this little gap right here. So that's where the end of our section is. And again, as we go back and forth, that gap will continue to get longer because the section is longer than the stitches on what's left from the lower part of the sweater. So I'm going to continue working back and forth and repeating rows two and three until my piece measures the correct length from the cast on edge to the top of my work right here. So it's going to need to be the same length from the cast on edge as this up here is from the cast on edge. And the number will vary depending on the size that you're making. But for the size I'm making, I'm supposed to go until my work for the upper back is 23 inches from the cast on edge to the stitches that are on my needle. All right, so I have finished pretty much the upper back section here and it is the correct measurement from the stitches on the needle to the cast on edge for the size that I'm working. So as you can see here's our upper right front. You don't want to check whether the back is long enough by just measuring it against the upper right front. You want to actually measure it from the cast on edge to be really sure that it is correct. And the remaining stitches from the lower portion are still held on the needle over here. So we're going to work those next to do the upper left front. But first we're going to finish up the upper back. So what we're going to do is I've ended on my purl row. So the next row would be a knit row. It's not critical whether you end on a purl row or a knit row. But either way, if your next row would be a knit row, you're going to be binding off with knit stitches. And if your next row would be a purl row, you'd be binding off with purl stitches. So my next row would be a knit row. So I'm going to bind off across, all the way across this entire piece with knit stitches. All right, so I'm going to knit the first stitch, knit the second stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one, Knit another stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one. Another stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one. Again, we're doing this kind of loosely. You don't want it to be tight or bunched. But we're going to just bind off like this all the way across our upper back. All right, so there is my last stitch. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut the yarn and tie off. And for this one, I'm not going to leave such a long tail because this tail really won't be used for seaming. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that off. And that is our upper back. Now you can't totally see um, the shape just the way it's going to be because it does curl. It's stockinette stitch and stockinette stitch curls. But this is going to be our armhole right here. And then this we're going to bring these edges together for our shoulder seams. And then this little ribbing tab is going to go across to the center and meet up with the one on the other side. And this collar will be able to kind of fold back a bit. All right, so as you can see, we have our upper right front, our upper back. Now we're going to do our upper left front. And this is basically a mirror image of this section over here. Okay, so here's the little section we're going to be working with. And again, we're going to start with our new yarn in the first stitch next to the previous section, which is our upper back. So we're going to start over here because our first row is a right side row. So here's my new yarn. And I'm going to start on this end right here. So I'm going to bring my needle back into those stitches. And we're going to start knitting row one of our upper left front. So I'm going to hold the yarn behind my work like this. I can even hold it in my right hand if I want to. And for row one, 
the pattern tells me that for the size I'm making, I'm supposed to knit 27 stitches and slip the marker. So it will be a different number of stitches for the other sizes. All right, so there was my 27 for the size I'm making. Now I'm going to slip the marker by just placing it onto the right needle instead of the left. And now for my size, the pattern tells me to purl two, knit two, six times. So I'm going to purl two, knit two. That's the first time. Purl two, knit two. Second time. Third time. Fourth time. Fifth time. And the sixth time, I've got two stitches left, and the pattern tells me to purl those two stitches. Now, I had to repeat the purl two, knit two, six times, but that depends on the size you're making, how many times you're going to repeat that or do it in total. So that was row one. And now I'm going to turn and work row two. So for row two, for the size that I'm making, the pattern tells me to knit two, purl two, six times. So knit two, purl two, that's the first time. Second time. Third time. Fourth time. The fifth time. And the sixth time, and then I'm supposed to knit two and slip my marker, which just means moving it to the right needle. And now for the size that I'm making, the pattern tells me to purl 27. And this will get me all the way across to the end of my row. All right, so I'm at the end of my row, and as you can see, the stitch from the previous row, that was the first stitch we joined our yarn with, is kind of stretched out and long because there's nothing to secure that. So I'm going to make sure that I have good tension in the stitch above and just tug on that yarn a little bit to even it out with the stitches that are around it. Then I'm going to tie that yarn tail together with the working yarn. And I like to use a double knot. All right, so my tail is secure and those were the two rows that we're going to be repeating for most of this section. So now what we're gonna do is just repeat rows one and two for the upper left front until the piece measures the correct length from the cast on edge of the sweater to the stitches on the needle. So for the size I'm making, it's supposed to measure 23 inches from the cast on edge to the stitches on the needle. So I'm just going to keep repeating rows one and two until I get to that length. And we need to end with row two. So the last row we work should be row two, which is that purl row. All right, so here is my upper left front at this point. I have worked to the correct point ending with row two. And now we're ready to work the little extension kind of tab that comes up from the ribbing at the same time as we bind off the shoulder edge. Just like we did on this side, we're going to bind off these stitches and then make the ribbing extend up a few more inches. So this is why we ended with this row is because now we are at the correct end to bind off these stitches. So for row three, for the size that I'm making, again, the number will be different for other sizes. The pattern tells me to bind off 26 stitches. And again, yes, I am doing this loosely. You don't wanna do it too tight or it will scrunch. And we just want it to lay flat. You don't want it to be like crazy amount of stretch you just want it to be enough that it will lay flat and smooth so that when we sew it together that our seam will look nice and neat. All right, so that was my 26th bound off stitch. For the size that I'm making, that was the correct number, but it will be a different number depending on the size you're making. So now I have one stitch left on my right needle before the marker. We're gonna remove the marker 
and now the pattern tells me to purl two, knit two until I have two stitches left on the needle. So there's my last two stitches and I'm going to purl two. So that was row three and now we're going to turn and work row four. And for row four, we're going to knit two, purl two across to the last three stitches. So there's my last three stitches. I'm going to knit two and purl one. So that's row four. We're going to turn and work row five. So for row five, we're going to knit one and then purl two, knit two till the last two stitches. And then there's my last two stitches. I'm going to purl two. So that was row five. And we're going to repeat rows four and five until the ribbing extends the correct distance past this bound off edge right here. So for the size that I'm making, it's supposed to extend two and three quarter inches past this bind off edge, just like we did over here. It just needs to keep going past where the bind off edge for the shoulder is. All right, so I have finished that little extension part of the ribbing. My ribbing is the correct length from this bound off edge to the stitches on the needle. And now what we're gonna do is bind off, and as you'll see, where we stopped by ending with row five, our yarn ends up over here at the neck edge, so that when we bind off, it will end up over here at the kind of the collar edge that we're, where it will be seamed. So now I'm just going to bind off in pattern, and again, that just means as we bind off, we're knitting the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches. So this one is a knit stitch, I'm gonna knit it, knit the second stitch, pass the first stitch over, the next stitch is a purl stitch, pass the first stitch over, another purl stitch, pass the first stitch over, here's a knit stitch, and etc. We're just going to bind off, knitting the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches until we get through all of these stitches. Here's the last stitch, and we're going to go ahead and cut the yarn. And this is a place where we're going to leave a tail because we're going to use this tail for seaming. So I've left about a yard of a tail. And now we can go ahead and tie off. So that is the finished body of the sweater. And so we've got, here's our upper left front. Here's our upper back. Obviously they look smaller than they actually are because they're curled up on both sides and on the top. And then here's our upper right front. So this is basically finished. This is the body of the sweater. And until we're ready to block our pieces and sew the sweater together, we're gonna to set this aside and we're going to start making our sleeves. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and work our sleeves. Obviously we're going to be making two sleeves, but I'm only going to be showing how to make one because they're both exactly the same. Now I've gone ahead and because these are interchangeable circular needles, I just went ahead and put a shorter cable on them just to make it a little bit easier to handle. You don't have to do that. You could even work the sleeves on straight needles if you want. It doesn't really matter. But that's kind of a personal preference thing. So really all that's required for the pattern is that long circular. If you have other needles that you wanna use as long as they're the same size, you know, if you wanna use a straight needle for the sleeve or a shorter circular, go for it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start at the bottom of the sleeve and work like the cast on and the ribbing at the bottom. And then the sleeve is gradually going to taper up as we continue on. So I've got my slip knot here and I'm gonna be using a long tail cast on. And for the size that I'm making, which is the extra small, I'm supposed to cast on 34 stitches. All right, so those are my 34 stitches. Now this might look a little small right now, but this is the cuff or the wrist of the sleeve. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to work the little ribbing section 
before we start increasing the sleeves width as we go up. So the ribbing section is knit straight, then there's no, uh, no shaping or increases there. So I'm going to start by working row one. Again, just because I'm using a circular needle does not mean we're knitting in the round because we're not. We're just using the circular needle to knit back and forth. And like I said, if you want, you can use straight needles for this part. I just prefer circulars over straight needles just because that extra length is not going to be banging around on my table as I'm showing you this. So for row one, we're going to knit two, purl two, all the way across until we get to the last two stitches. So just knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, all the way across. And then when we get to the last two stitches, we're going to go ahead and knit those last two stitches. So that was row one. Now we're going to turn and work row two. And row two is just the reverse. We're going to purl two, knit two, all the way across until we get to the last two stitches. So just purl two and knit two all the way across. And now we're at the last two stitches and we're going to purl those last two stitches. So I'm going to continue repeating rows one and two to make my ribbing until the piece measures two and a half inches from the cast on edge. And that two and a half inches applies to all sizes because the ribbing cuff, the cuff length is going to be the same for every size. We're gonna do a two and a half inch ribbing section. So just continue repeating rows one and two until your piece is two and a half inches long from the cast on edge to the stitches on the needles. All right, so I've got my ribbing to the length that I need it to be, the two and a half inches, and I've ended with row two. So now what we're gonna do is start working the increase part where we're going to make the sleeve wider as we go up. So there's going to be a set of four rows that we're going to repeat, and they're all relatively simple. So for row three, which is the first row of our increase repeat, we're going to knit across. So we're just gonna knit every single stitch all the way across. Because now we are working a stockinette stitch. The rest of the sleeve is in stockinette stitch. All right, so that was my row three. Now I'm gonna turn and work row four. And for row four, we're just going to purl all the way across. All right, so that is our row four. And now we're going to work row five, which is the row that we actually work the increases on. And we're going to use a simple increase called a knit front and back. So what we're going to do is we're going to knit the first stitch and then we're going to work our knit front and back. So that basically means we're going to knit into the stitch twice. We're going to knit once into the front and once into the back. So what we're gonna do is insert our right needle into the front leg of that stitch or the front strand. We're going to knit through it, but we're not going to pull it off of the left hand needle yet. Now we're going to kind of tip it forward a little bit and insert that same right needle again into the back strand of that same stitch, knit through that, and then we can lift it off of the left needle. So we have two stitches out of one now. So now I'm going to knit across to the last two stitches and I will show you that increased stitch again, the knit front and back. All right, so there's the last two stitches. So this stitch right here, the next one on the needle is going to be where our knit front and back goes. And again, we're going to be making this stitch into two. So we're gonna knit into it twice. So to do that, I'm going to bring my right needle up under the front strand or the, this part of the stitch that goes in front of the left needle. So I'm inserting my right needle into that, knitting through it, just like a regular knit stitch, but I'm not lifting the old stitch off of the left hand needle. I'm going to bring the needle forward a little bit so I can see behind. Then I'm going to take that right needle and insert it into the back side of that same stitch, the back strand or the back leg of the stitch. And then I'm going to knit through that as well 
and that creates two stitches out of one and now I can let go of the old stitch off the left needle. So that is how we're doing the knit front and back and then I'm just going to knit the last stitch of the row. So if you want to see that knit front and back stitch again you can always rewind the video a little bit and replay that section again if you need to see it more times to get it. So now we're going to work row six and for row six we're just going to purl all the way across. All right so that is our row six. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue repeating rows three to six which was those four rows that we just did and each time we repeat those four rows because we're doing one knit front and back at this end and one knit front and back at this end that increases one stitch each time we do it. So a total of two stitches every time we work row five. Every time you work that row five, it increases two stitches. It adds two stitches to the width of your sleeve. So we're going to be repeating rows three to six another 19 times for a total of 40 stitches increase. So by the time we finish working rows three to six another 19 times, for a total of 20 times if we include that time we just did, then we will have 40 stitches more. And I know that this probably looks really narrow right now, but keep in mind that I am working the smallest possible size, which is the extra small. And this is also kind of shrinking up a little bit because this is ribbing. But if it looks really small and you're not sure if, it, if it's coming out right, then just take it and slide it onto the cable part of the needle. And then you can lay it around your arm and bring the edges together. And if you see, if I were to sew this edge right here, there's still plenty of room in here for my hand and wrist in the width of this sleeve cuff because it is shrinking up. That's why it looks so small because it is ribbed and not because it's actually that small. It's actually several inches wider than what it appears to be. So just continue repeating rows three to six another 19 times. All right, so here is what our sleeve looks like at this point. You can see that at the bottom here, we have our ribbing. This looks a lot narrower than it actually is because it shrinks up from the ribbing. It's just like accordion fold paper would shrink up. And then it slowly, gradually gets wider as we move up towards the top. Now, before we go any further with the sleeve, which there is a little bit more to do, I want to show you how you can count how many repeats of those uh, rows three to six that you have done. So each time you repeat rows three to six, or even the first time you work them, the fifth row, the row five, has two increases, one at each end of the row. That's the knit front and back. So you will be able to see, if you know how to find it, each knit front and back. So because that increase only happens one time on each side per time we work rows three to six, then we can count those little increase stitches that you can see on the edge of the work. Each time we see one of those, then we've worked another repeat. So if we look closely here, as you can see, there's this little bump this little horizontal bump that kind of resembles a purl stitch right here, right here, right here, right here, and etc. And each one of those is a knit front and back. That's actually, that little bump is the stitch that we knit into the back of that knit front and back. So every time we have one of those, that's one time that we've worked our rows three to six. So by the time you get to the end, you should not only have the correct number of stitches on the needle for the size that you're making, but you should also have 20 of these little horizontal bumps that run along each edge between the ribbing and the needle. Now look, this one right here, this little bump is a purl stitch that's part of the ribbing. That does not count. Your first little knit front and back stitch right here will not be at the very base of where the ribbing stops and the stockinette stitch starts. It will be a little bit up. It'll be a few rows after the ribbing has totally stopped. 
So just make sure you're not counting the purl stitches in the ribbing as increases because they're not. So I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer to the camera so you can see it a little bit better. But this right here and this right here are these little bumps, horizontal strands of yarn that do not go along with the, the regular V shape of the knit stitches. So by the time you finish this section of the sleeve and you've repeated rows three to six another 19 times for a total of 20 times, if you include the first time we did it, then you should have 20 of those little increase bumps on each side of your sleeve. So now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat rows three to four, which is just knit a row and purl a row. So we're going to knit the right side rows and knit uh, and purl, excuse me, the wrong side rows. So what we're going to do is this, this number is going to be dependent upon the size that you're making, but for the size that I'm making, I'm supposed to repeat th rows three to four eight times for a total of not eight rows because we're repeating rows three and four. We're repeating two rows eight times. So that will be a total of 16 more rows. So for row three, I'm just going to knit the entire row all the way across. And for row four, I'm going to purl the entire row all the way across. So I'm going to repeat those two rows eight times for a total of 16 more rows beyond what I've already done. All right, so I have finished the extra rows of repeating rows three and four, and for the size I'm making, it was repeating rows three and four eight more times for a total of 16 more rows. And so you will be able to tell when you have completed that because the 16th row will be a purl row, it will be a wrong side row. And so you'll end up where the next row should be a right side row and you should have, here's the little, the last little bump from the increase and then there's the stitch that comes out of it. That was the kind of the return pass on the purl row right after that. So that was the last time you repeated row six. So then after that, after the little bump and the stitch that comes out of it, then you should have 16 more rows that you can count up to your needle. And it should also measure the correct length from the stitches on the needle down to the cast on edge at the cuff. So now we're going to bind off our sleeve and we're just going to bind off all the way across. And because this would have been a knit row, I'm gonna knit the first two stitches, pass the first one over the second one, knit another stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one, and etc. all the way across. All right, so I just got a couple of stitches left to bind off, there's the last one. And now, we're going to cut the yarn and tie off. Now, when you cut the yarn on your sleeve, you're gonna to wanna to leave a pretty decent length of a tail. I'm doing about two, two and a half yards. And the reason for this is because we're going to be using this tail to attach the sleeve to the sweater and to sew the sleeve seam. So it needs to be long enough to do both of those things. So that is why we are leaving such a long tail. So that is our first sleeve. Now you just need to repeat the same instructions to make the second sleeve. And yes, again, this looks smaller than it actually is because it curls up. I'm losing a good inch on both sides as far as appearance of how big it is just from the curl. So just know that when you sew it together, it will not curl anymore and you will be able to better see the size of the sleeve as it actually is and not just how it appears because it's curled up. All right, so now that I've finished my second sleeve, I have gone ahead and blocked all of my pieces. Now I steam blocked this because it is acrylic and acrylic kind of prefers steam blocking in my opinion. So I steam blocked mine and as you can see, I heavily steam blocked the ribbing and the ribbing now kind of lays more open. This used to be about this wide when it was all shrunk up and now it is, you know, I stretched it out and pinned it out when I steamed it and I went over it with the steamer. And by the way, when I say that, when you steam block, you wanna hold your either steamer or steaming iron a couple inches off the surface of the fabric. So you don't wanna let it touch the yarn 
but I held it over and kind of hovered it over several times over the ribbing to make sure it was fully penetrated with steam and it really helps relax the ribbing. You can see that it's more kind of drapey and you can actually see the texture of the ribbing and not just this little scrunched up section. Same goes for the sleeve ribbing. That has also opened up quite a bit. So now we're going to assemble the sweater. And by the way, I recommend you block your pieces before you assemble because it's a lot harder to do it afterwards. Much better to do it while the pieces are still flat. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start up here. This is the body of the sweater piece right here. This is the back section. And then here is this section up here that's the upper left front. When well, I say that's the upper left front because it is wrong side up, but it's still the upper left front. If this was right side up, then the one on this side would be the upper right front. So here's the upper right front over here. We're just seeing it from the back. So it looks more like the upper left front. And what I'm gonna do is I have it facing wrong side up. This is the back section. And we're going to fold in the front sections. Here's our armhole slit. We're going to fold them kind of towards the center like this, just like you were wearing it on both sides. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to the collar part. So we're going to take one of these two yarn tails. We left relatively long yarn tails on both collars. As you can see, they both finish on the same side. So the one on this side finishes with the yarn tail on the right, and the one on this side also finishes with the yarn tail on the right. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the one that has the yarn tail that is on the neck edge or the collar edge. This is the tail we're gonna be using first. So I am going to go ahead and grab a yarn needle. I'm gonna go for a bent tip and I'm gonna thread my yarn tail through that needle. So what we're going to do is join the ends of these collar extensions, these parts of the ribbing that extend past what will be the shoulder seam down here. So we're going to take these two and we are going to kind of bring them together like this with the bind off edges together. So they were like that. I'm gonna take them and bring the bind off edges together like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you something here. These two edges right here, these bound off edges of our collar extensions are going to be sewn together. And then what's going to happen is once these are joined together, this seam is gonna go at the back of the neck and then the collar is going to fold back. So we can't just lay them, even though they're right side up, we cannot seam them together right side up or right sides together because then our seam will show on the outside what will be the outside when we fold it back. So this part right here is going on the back of the neck. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring them together wrong sides up or wrong sides together. So the way you can tell when it is wrong side up or wrong sides together is that the pearl side of the stockinette stitch fabric down here is facing up. So what we're going to do is kind of lay these out like this. And I'm actually going to go ahead and turn this whole thing upside down so that it's closest to me and I can, you know, use it, use the needle and and stitch the seam a little easier. And we're going to kind of mattress stitch these two ends together. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a little stitch first in the opposite corner from the one I'm at. And again, I'm starting with the yarn tail that is on the neck edge. So I'm going to take a stitch through the opposite corner and then I'm going to come over here and we're going to kind of mattress stitch this by taking um, two strands or what's actually one stitch column because remember my stitch columns are going this way. I'm going to take two strands or one stitch column with my needle and pull it through. Then I'm going to come to the other side and take another two strands, which is one stitch column 
and pull it through. And then I'm going to come over here and take another couple strands or the equivalent of one stitch column and pull it through on that side and then the same thing over here. I'm just going to take two strands that are perpendicular to the bound off edge and that just means that the bound off edge runs this way. You want two strands that are going this way. So I am grabbing another stitch column on that side and as we pull this seam it's going to disappear more and more. So because we're sewing this seam from the wrong side then when we fold this back on the right side the nice side of the seam will be facing out. So here is my right side. I'm going to come over here and pick up two strands of yarn on this side which is one stitch column. Then I'm going to come over here and pick up two strands on this side which is one stitch column and pull it through. Do the same thing again. These are the, you know, what appears to be the knit columns from this side. And then on this side I'm going to pick up another column over here and go ahead and pull that yarn and it will help to kind of make that seam disappear. And then I'm going to come over here in the purl column and the purls are a little bit harder to find, but we're still picking up horizontal strands and pulling through each what's the equivalent of a stitch column with each time we take a stitch through that side. So I am just going to continue mattress stitching these two collar extension edges together, the bound off edges, and then I will show you what it looks like when I get to the end of the seam. All right, so I am down to the last couple of stitches here and you might notice that even on this very last column even after we have done both knit columns both knit stitches there's still an extra stitch here and this is our edge stitch that we had from um, when we stopped here we left one more stitch to go up that edge that's kind of going to be our seam allowance and that's going to be the stitch column that we use for seaming we're still going to stitch it together up here though so I'm going to grab that little corner here and over here. And then what we're going to do before we finish this up is we're going to kind of pull it tight like that. And then kind of give it a little bit of a stretch to make sure it's not gathered up. You just want to kind of pull it taut as far as you can to make sure that it's going to lay it nice and flat. And that is what our seam looks like. So I'm going to take a couple strands of yarn from that very edge of the seam and wrap the yarn around the needle, pull it through to make a knot. So that is our first seam. And you'll notice we are now at the same point where the other yarn tail is coming from, from the opposite, you know, bound off part of the collar extension. So now what we're going to do is kind of stitch the back neck edge of our collar. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this back to the right side. So as I said before, working that seam from the wrong side created a seam on the right side. So this seam is on the outside of the sweater, but we're going to fold this collar back when the sweater is worn so that seam will be hidden and it will be underneath instead of on the outside. So now what we're going to do is this right here, since this is the collar like this, this is the center of the back of the neck, then this edge is kind of our back neck edge. It needs to attach anyway to the back neck edge. So what we're going to do is take this entire edge and we're going to stitch it to this entire edge. So just like this, we're going to kind of stitch these two edges together. And as we do this, we're going to start from the center and work our way out. Why? Because we have two yarn tails in the center. So we're going to take one yarn tail and go one direction and use the other yarn tail to go the other direction and we'll end up at the shoulders. So this right here is the top edge of the upper back. These are the top edges of the upper fronts. And when we stitch this entire thing together across here, this is going to be the seam that goes across the shoulder, the back of the neck, and across the other shoulder. 
So when we take one yarn tail and go one direction and the other yarn tail to go the other direction, both tails are going to end up over here at the shoulder. Now I have this kind of folded towards me a little bit just so that it's laying flat and you can see it, but this seam will not be you know, on the front of the shoulder. It will run right across the top of the shoulder when the sweater is worn, just like any other garment that has a shoulder seam. All right, so I'm going to take the tail that's already on my needle and use it to work this direction. So I'm gonna kind of rotate it a little bit just so that you can see what I'm doing a little better. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take the two corners of this back, you know, upper back part, and we're going to find the center. So the center is right here, and we're going to line that up with that center back seam on our collar. So I'm going to stitch right through here, and again, we are using mattress stitch, but we're also going to be working into, for this little bit right here, our edge stitch. So this is going to be a little bit easier to see if I bring it up towards the camera. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the side with the edge stitch, and we're going to pick up two, you could do one, but I'm doing two horizontal strands of yarn that run perpendicular to this edge. And I'm going to bring my yarn up through that. And I'm going to come back over here and pick up two horizontal strands of yarn that run perpendicular to this edge. So the edge goes this way and the stitch, you know, the strands go this way, the stitch columns. So two strands, which is one stitch column. And then I'm going to come back over to the side with the edge stitch and insert right next to that edge stitch column and pick up two more of those horizontal strands. The next two, you don't want to be like skipping any or doing, you know, same the same stitch into the stitches that you've already used. So for mattress stitch, especially on the side with the edge stitches, you're basically working into the strand of yarn that runs horizontally between two stitch columns. So this one right here, it's upside down right now, but it still works the same way. This is our edge stitch column. Now this is a little harder to see here because this is a purl column or a, you know, a two purl stitch column that we are seaming next to. So it's a little bit harder to see the horizontal strands, but I will show you a little bit better when we get to a different seam like the sleeve seam where, where they're both uh, knit stitches on both sides. So I'm coming in right where my needle came out the last time, picking up two strands of yarn, and I am inserting my needle parallel to the edge of the knitting. And we're just running in between this edge stitch column and the first purl stitch column. So then I'm going to come back over here, pick up two more strands, which is another stitch column on that side. And then when we come over here and pick up two strands, it's not actually a stitch column. We are picking up two, um, two strands from two different rows and joining them to the two strands from the stitch column. And you can see as we kind of pull that seam taunt and then stretch it taunt, that this seam is also pretty much invisible. I mean, you can see that it's two different pieces, but it's not like a severe, harsh line here. It kind of blends together a little bit. So I'm going to come back over to this side and pick up my two horizontal strands in between the stitch columns. And then the same thing over here, two horizontal strands, which equal a stitch column, because on this side, the stitch columns are going this way, and on this side, they're going this way. And if you're not comfortable with mattress stitch, or if you're not comfortable with doing mattress stitch, you know, where you're joining knit that goes, you know, knitting that goes two different directions, that's okay. You could use a whip stitch if you don't like the mattress stitch here. So we are now getting to this kind of corner here. It's like an inside corner where the collar extension stops and now we are to the bound off edge of the shoulder. 
So this is, if we lay this side flat, this is a corner here where this, you know, shoulder edge stops and becomes part of the collar up here. And so we're now going to be seaming the shoulder edge to the bound off upper back edge. So this is kind of the same as we were doing before, but now we are seaming two pieces of knitting where the stitches go this direction. So I'm going to come over here on this side and pick up two of those horizontal strands, which is one stitch column, and then I'm going to come back over here and pick up two horizontal strands or one stitch column. And then just kind of alternating back and forth, picking up one stitch column on each side and making our way to the shoulder edge. And as I get into this little shoulder seam section, you might notice that if I stretch these both to as far as they will go, the back, the upper back edge is a little bit longer and there's nothing wrong with that. That is partially because of the collar that we just put in and the way that we stitched that in. Because even though we're using mattress stitch, which is a very straight and even way to seam things together, the two horizontal strands or two rows are not the same as, you know, one stitch column as we pull from this side. So it is going to be just a tad bit off, but that's okay. So don't worry if that is the case on your sweater because there's nothing wrong with that. So what we're going to do to help compensate for that is because if you can see, I've got about an extra quarter inch on my back panel than the front panel. So I'm going to be taking a few stitches as I move across here that take two strands from the back panel and only one from the front. And that will help to compensate by, you know, leaving us a few extra of these strands on the front so that by the time we get to the very edge that our edges will line up approximately. So I'm going to take a few more stitches with two strands from each side. And then I will come back over here and take a single strand from the front side and then two strands from the back. And then I'll do several more stitches with two from each side. And then we'll hold it up and see how close we are to getting them to match. So, so far, I am getting pretty close. I can probably do that little one strand from the front and two strands from the back stitch maybe two more times. So I'm gonna take one strand from the front side and two from the back and then work several more with two from each side and then maybe I'll come again and get one strand from the front side and two from the back and then take a couple more regular stitches and then we'll hold it up and see how close we are to getting to them to match so I think I can do that one more time where I'll take one strand from the front side and two from the back and then do a couple more regular stitches. And then we'll do the same thing again. Come up here and get one strand from the front side, two from the back, and then do a couple regular stitches as we get closer to the edge. So now I'm just going to take the last few regular stitches here, and then I'm gonna grab my edge stitch from the front and my edge stitch from the back and that will finish up that seam. So what we're gonna do is we're going to grab the center of the back neck and again, again give that seam like a good stretch to make sure that it is not going to be puckered or gathered and there's a limit to how far it can stretch and that's as far as we want to pull it. And then I'm gonna come back over here where my yarn tail is, grab a couple strands of yarn from that place where those two edges meet, wrap the yarn around the needle, and pull it tight. So that creates a knot that will finish up that seam. 
So now here is half of the back of the neck and the shoulder seam. So now we're going to do the same thing on the other side, connecting this edge to this edge all the way across. And I'm going to be using the other tail that's already at the center. All right, so I've got one edge stitch left on each side. I'm going to take that final stitch and then I'm going to come up here again and grab a couple strands at the edge, wrap the yarn around the needle, pull it through to make a knot. So that is the entire um, kind of upper back, neck, shoulder seam all in one. And if we lay this flat, you can kind of see what's going on here. Here's the shoulder seam up here, and then here's our collar, which is going to fold back like so. And you can see where we stitch that together all in one seam. So that is really the only assembly for the body of the sweater, mainly because we worked it all as one piece, so there are no side seams. And now what we're gonna do is add the sleeves. So the two yarn tails that we just used are basically done with because for the sleeves, we're going to be totally using just the yarn tails that are on the sleeves. So if you want to, at this point, you can weave in all the ends that are on the body of the sweater only and leave the tails that are on the sleeves. All right, so now that the body of the sweater is done, we're going to go ahead and do the sleeves. And for the sleeves, we're going to attach them to the body of the sweater first before sewing up the sleeve seam that runs kind of along the arm. So here is my sleeve panel. I actually have two of them, of course, but I'm just going to do one for now. This is the top part of the sleeve. And then down here is the cuff or the bottom part of the sleeve. You can see how nicely that ribbing kind of got smoothed out and stretched out. And it's a lot more relaxed now. So what we're going to do is we left our long tail at the top of the sleeve when we finished our sleeve. So what we're going to do is thread that long tail through the yarn needle and we are going to sew this long top edge of the sleeve to the sweater first before we bring these edges of the sleeve together. So I'm going to take the sleeve and I'm going to attach this one to this side of my sweater over here. So I'm going to bring the corner that the tail is attached to and kind of lay it next to the slit here where we made our armhole. So this here, as you remember, was not a seam. We knit this all in one piece and then split to do the back and the front sections separately to make the armhole slit here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a stitch. And again, we're using mattress stitch. So I'm going to come in. Here's the very, very edge right here. Here's our very edge. Here's the bottom kind of of our slit right here. I'm going to come in one stitch column in from the edge right next to the bottom of our slit and I am going to take two horizontal strands of yarn that go in between the very edge stitch column and the one next to it. So I'm inserting my needle in between those two edge stitch columns and then I'm going to go ahead and pull that stitch through and that is going to bring that corner of my sleeve down here to the underarm where we're going to stitch it. So I'm going to come here and grab two strands of yarn from the sleeve. So one stitch column from the sleeve. And then I'll come over here and grab another two strands of yarn, horizontal strands that run in between the edge stitch column and the one next to it. And that's going to be how we're mattress stitching this sleeve on. Now, what we just did is enough to tack that corner together, but we want to kind of leave an edge stitch here as well. So I want to make sure that that very edge stitch extends a little bit past 
the seam or the end of the armhole slit. So we're going to stitch this edge all the way around this edge until we get back down to here. But to make sure we're doing this evenly, we want to take the top edge of the sleeve and fold it in half and find the center point. So I'm going to take the center point and I'm going to line it up with the shoulder seam. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a locking stitch marker and just kind of pin those points together so that they do not come um, unaligned. So now that these center points are lined up, you can see that the edge of the sleeve is actually longer than this edge of the armhole. And that is because the sleeve is going the opposite direction. Stitches are going the opposite direction and stitches are generally wider than they are long. So what we're going to do to make these edges line up correctly is we're going to take one strand for each stitch on the armhole side for every two strand stitch we take on the sleeve side. And this is also kind of because the sleeve being knit in the opposite direction has more stretch going this way than it does going this way. That's just the nature of knitted fabric. So same here, the fabric stretches more going this way than it does going this way. So we are sewing the direction of the fabric with the most stretch to the direction with the least stretch. Now it's not going to have, you know, a lot of stretch in the seam itself because this is not a stretchy type of seam, but we just need to adjust for the fact that this sleeve is knit in the opposite direction from the armhole. So again, for every one stitch or one single strand that I take, I'm going to be taking that strand between the edge stitch column and the column next to it, horizontal strands that kind of are hidden behind and between those columns. I'm going to pick up one stitch, one strand on that side for a stitch, and then two strands on the sleeve side. And this will help kind of ease the sleeve in. We even do this in garment sewing because the sleeve edge is pretty much always longer than the armhole. So I am going to continue stitching it together in this manner, taking one strand from the armhole side and two strands from the sleeve side. And then I will stop when I get to the marker and the center points that it is holding. And then I will show you how I'm going to do the other side of the sleeve seam. So I'm down to the last few stitches before the marker here. And as you can see, my sleeve seam or the shoulder seam right here that connects the armhole to the sleeve is nice and neat and smooth. It doesn't bubble or wrinkle. And that's because as I've gone along, as I said, I've been taking most of my stitches with one strand from the armhole and two strands from the sleeve, but I've also thrown in some that had two from each side. And it's just very gently, you know, making both edges fit each other. And you just want to kind of go by how it looks to you and if you think it needs more stitches that only take one sti one strand from the armhole or if it looks relatively even and you can take more of your stitches you know from two strands on both sides it doesn't necessarily have to be any certain number of stitches or a certain number of um, always having x number of strands from each side you just want to make sure that it lays flat and smooth and even and a lot of times, and most of the time, in fact, it will take, you know, both kinds of stitches. The kind that take two strands from each side, and the kind that take one strand from the armhole and two strands from the sleeve. So as I approach the little stitch marker, I'm going to take it out, because it's a little bit too close to where I'm at to be able to see what I'm doing very well. So there's a couple little yarn tails over here from the shoulder. I'm going to just kind of move those out of the way for the moment. 
and I'm going to finish up these last few stitches from that half of the armhole seam. And we are now pretty much to that line that is our shoulder seam. So now what we're going to do is now that we've gotten halfway through our sleeve, I'm going to kind of flip it over a little bit. So here is the two long edges of our sleeve. Here's the bottom of the armhole. Move the other tails out of the way. And we're going to use our stitch marker to kind of pin this corner of the sleeve to the one that's already stitched down. Now you want to keep in mind you want to leave an edge stitch. And so we're going to kind of pin it together through the edge stitch, you know, where we would mattress stitch those together because we don't want to run out of room. So I'm going to pin those together right between the edge stitch columns and the next columns over from the edge, just where we would mattress stitch them so that when I go to kind of ease this side of the sleeve in, you can see it's still wider, then I will not run out of um, sleeve before I get to the place where these are supposed to meet up because these are going to be seamed down here as well and we want to make sure that they are, you know, consistent and they meet each other at the armhole or at the underarm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue seaming the same way, seaming the sleeve to the armhole, taking some stitches with two strands from the sleeve and one from the armhole, and taking other stitches with two strands from both sides, just whatever looks like it needs to even out. And then I will show you what we're going to do when we get down to the armhole. All right, so I am down to the very armhole the very underarm, I should say. We are basically down to the place where all these things are going to meet. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be taking a few of these what are now vertical strands as I stitch the last little bit of the sleeve to this little kind of underarm point. So I'm just taking a few strands from down here with each stitch I take in the sleeve. So that should be the last one because all that's left here is my edge stitch. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to again, go ahead and give that seam, the entire armhole seam a good stretch to make sure that it is pulled out as far as it'll go as far as um, so that it's not bunched up or cinched we just want it to lay flat and then I'm going to kind of grab a couple strands of yarn from down here wrap the yarn around the needle and pull it through to make a knot and now we're going to stitch our sleeve seam so I can get rid of the marker now and here is our sleeve as it appears once it's attached to the armhole and what we're going to do is mattress stitch these two edges together all the way out to the sleeve cuff. So I'm going to kind of turn this on its side a little bit. So I've got the two edges both facing up where that I can get to them. And we're going to just mattress stitch these two edges together. And in this case, we will always be taking the same number of strands from each side. So if I come over here and take one strand, then I should also take one strand from the other side. Or if I come and take two strands from this side, then I should also take two strands from this side. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take two strands from each side of the sleeve in every stitch and again we're running right next to that little edge stitch and I'm just going to continue doing this all the way down until I get to the edge of the sleeve cuff. Alright so I am down to just the last little bit of the sleeve cuff and if you've ever 
wondered at this point why on the sleeve we had a knit two at both edges of the sleeve. You know, you might have thought, well, we're going to put those together and then we're going to have that ex like an extra wide knit column in our ribbing. But actually, because we're using one edge stitch from each side, we take one of those knit columns into the seam from each side. So then we just have a knit two ribbing column that matches all the rest of them when we sew that up. So I've just got a couple more stitches left and I am down to the cast on edge. So now I'm going to go ahead and take one more stitch between the two edges, wrap the yarn around the needle, and pull it through to make a knot. So that is our last seam for this side of the sweater. So now we're just going to go ahead and repeat those same steps for the sleeve on the other side of our sweater because we could do we do kind of need a sweater with two sleeves. And then once we weave in all our ends, our sweater will be totally finished. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my second sleeve and weave in all the ends. And just FYI, I personally prefer whenever possible to weave my ends into a seam kind of like this at least for most of the way if not all of the way and then you know maybe every couple inches or so then I like to um, pull the needle through and then take a little tiny knot in that seam allowance to make sure that that tail does not come out. And then I'll just keep weaving it in up that seam a little further, a couple more inches, make another knot, you know, and then weave it in a little bit more and then cut it so that the end doesn't come out. But I'm going to go ahead and do that with all of my yarn tails that are on the sweater and then our sweater will be finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you have ever knitted a sweater in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.